Really nice to meet you. Same here. Thank you for coming to my home and doing interview with me. Thank you. अच्छा बेटा दो दो कैमरा सामने रखो ऐसा बदतमीजी करे तो कैसा बेटा मेरी इज्जत रख लो सर दो मिनट मैं हूं तुम्हारी माँ शिफू मैं हूं फ्रॉम फोर थर्टी फोर ओ क्लॉक इन द मॉर्निंग तक सो वेन ही स्लीपिंग इन द डे आई एम लाइक So our guest today on Celebrity Pet Parents is the amazing Kubra Sir. Thank you. <laughs> the handsome man in her life, Master Shifu. Absolutely, we should try to get him again, no? अच्छा बेटा, दो दो कैमरा सामने रखो ऐसा बदतमीजी करे तो कैसा बेटा? अच्छा 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 बदतमीजी नहीं करना, please. मेरी इज्जत रख लो, सर दो मिनट. Two minutes, give me respect, just for fake, fake, fake respect, fake. Like don't tell anyone that you don't respect me. Oh, there you go. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> Clearly, we had a conversation. Clearly, we do not have like a middle ground. So, how did this amazing man enter your life? This guy. So, there's a family a friend of ours in Bangalore. Shifu was the last litter of the lot. Shifu's mother's name is Duchess, and Shifu's father's name is Buddhi. because he is very smart shifu and his brothers and sisters were born and it was the last litter so i got a call saying bahut acha bachcha paida karu bahut bahut acha bahut khoobsurat bachche hain do you want to see and it was literally 10 years ago that i was taking a flight back from bangalore to bombay mm-hmm. uh, mumbai and then pick this little child and i'm not even kidding you the second i saw him he was this much okay he was tiny he was really small and he jumped on my back and he was walking on my back and i saw his little brown ears his little brown nose and i'm like this is shifu and then i picked shifu uh, bought a small crate and then brought him to bombay and he's been mine since so yeah i'm very grateful to shahid uncle for giving me this yeah and so was the name like a impromptu decision yeah, you thought I about it i saw him and uh-huh. i said this is shifu it was so instant it was like this is shifu i think my next cat's going to be mogambo oh. i already know that yeah yeah that's true and but how did he change your life because i'm sure the routine has changed now so when he came in we had another cat mm-hmm. called beta and beta was already 10 years old at that point so she was the lady of the house and uh, you could not have anyone else sharing her territory because she was extremely territorial so humne kaha ki nahi nahi we are going to now pretend that shifu doesn't exist in this house so then we told rati who is my help so we told beta and and it's it's bizarre okay in our minds cats understand everything mm. so we told rati you know now you have to say that shifu is your son shifu is your son <laughs> so that so that beta doesn't get offended and beta is not like oh mera bhai aa gaya bhai beta koi zarurat nahi hai it's not important ye hamara hai hi nahi ye he is just here temporary temporary and then obviously he lived with us uh, till beta passed away and then much after so he came in as you know this divine blessing into our house because i honestly believe because he came into our house beta who lived with us till she was almost like 12 and a half 13 nearly 13 because her 12th birthday we celebrated like there were like lots of people in our house so i have a feeling that this young soul uh, brought like beta so many uh, she, he got he gave her like two years of extra life and so many more memories to live with so True. yeah so he came in then and uh, did the routines change not really at that time do the routines change now not really because cats are quite like independent yeah as am i so <laughs> we are quite like independently dependent on each other so we're very happy it's like yeah okay come here i need your love and then he needs like hey can you just scratch my back and then we're like ah okay perfect everything is good so that's where we are with the cat situation and so were you always a cat person you grew up around cats as well yeah i did i think my first cat's name was dicky bizarre that her name was dicky her <laughs> yeah. name was dicky <laughs> uh and uh, she was siamese someone had gifted her to us and we didn't know it was a her huh. and then one day she went out she came back and like some three months later she had like some eight kittens and that's when we were like kala mu karke aayi hai 
Yeah, so that's when y'all figured that. That's when we is. figured that it was not a guy. <laughs> and also, we often see the cute part of animals. But you've also spoken about how you healed yourself to be with your cat. Yeah. So that's something you know. That's something people don't really talk about as much. So yeah. we'd love to know that as well. So I'm really like uh, my my entire life is is is. independent as i am my life is so beautifully interwoven with shifu's life right so it was during the pandemic and he was like throwing up weirdly i didn't understand why he was throwing up i had never dealt with a crisis with another soul before in my life i was always thinking i was responsible for myself and i could do the best thing for me but i didn't know what i could do to make him feel better so i tried every doctor i took him for multiple tests i took him i mean now this doctor said we can't find anything we need to operate your cat i've never ever been the signatory where i'm like jao is bacche pe operation karo and we don't know what's the outcome of the operation so it was extremely nerve wracking for me while i was uh, sitting by myself like most of us were in our houses during the pandemic so it was a lot of stress and then someone interestingly told me have you spoken to an animal whisperer Mm. I said, "What is an animal whisperer?" Although I had heard of an animal whisperer through like a YouTube video years ago, so I said, "Ha, meko animal whisperer se bhi baat karwa do." And it was so interesting because the animal whisperer who had never seen Shifu told me like traits of Shifu, told me his behaviors, and then told me that. he's absorbing a lot of my energy so the more angry the more frantic the more hopeless and helpless i felt that energy was being drawn from me into shifu so she said if you want your cat to heal you need to heal you need to like find your center you need to find your grounding and know that everything is going to be okay so then it was really like me healing myself and i saw shifu heal himself too yeah and that was pretty amazing because we don't understand really still what your pets do for you yeah so true and how they make your life better so i'm i'm extremely grateful he's made me a far more sensitive person he's made me like i read this the other day and and i have like said this before as well my cat teaches me so many things like one thing that i know from my cat is how not to have imposter syndrome he knows he deserves it <laughs> yeah true so he's very shant and cool while i'm second guessing all my moves in like so i feel like that for me has been such an important learning and even like an area of growth oh, i love my cat <laughs> No, that's so interesting because we often think cats are indifferent, and you know that they are not really as loving as dogs. But you never really know how they are affected by, yeah. you know, their parents' behavior. Yeah. So, yeah, like that's what we say, right? Even children get affected. They have like the theta waves that work on an infant's mind is what works on their mind. And the other thing I very interestingly learned recently is that with cats. they don't understand the language you speak they understand the frequency in which you speak okay. so i can look at my cat and you little monkey and he'll be fine yo monkey and mm. it changes everything for a cat wow and they can actually tell by your movement by your frequency by your energy we are all moving in like different like vibrations so this is something i learned and i try to regulate it as much as possible around him because I know it makes me a better person, and that's why I think in general you feel just so calm after like the most hectic day. Uh, he's one person I would like lie in his belly and cry if I need to. If there's a joke that's really stupid, I want to share. I'll share it with him, and I just find the same reciprocal from him. Like he reciprocates in the same way. So yeah, and you also have some beautiful cat accessories everywhere. Yeah, this house is a cat house. It's a it mad is. cat house. Yeah. Yeah, I so have cats from almost everywhere. I have cat magnets. Uh, there used to be like two cats hanging here as well. They were from Prague. Uh, they were made out of like stained glass, but then obviously they ran its course, so they broke. But I have cats from in, in porcelain. I have wooden cats. I have cats in frames. I have magnets. I have art. I have cushions. Uh, I have uh, memorabilia. I have. I just have. I love cats. And I love cats. Welcome when people tolerate it, which is true for every animal person. Yeah. Yeah. Like, please, I will tolerate you, but yeah, cats are welcome. And so, do you like accessorizing him also? Like, you know, putting all those cute 
Yeah, and some yeah, yeah. I'll do like some random shit where you know he's got like this thing with bunny ears, so I'll make him wear that. I have a pair of sunglasses for him. Wow. Okay. But he's also been a part during the lockdown. For example, we were doing an online play huh. called Lockdown Lovers, oh. and I was the cra- crazy cat lady in that. Okay. So then Shifu was like my co-guest, like my co-actor in the in the play. Yeah. So just before he had to make his entry in the play, I had to like play with like a blue ribbon. and chase him around so his adrenaline is super high and then he'll come into the frame and then i let him go <laughs> so what he did here okay. i had to be prepared for that one moment because we had people logging in from the world over to watch us right and uh, we used to be like hey <laughs> this is shifu and how did friends and family react to him like do you remember their reaction i think everybody was very happy also i think for a very long time i've been dependent on my mother to take care of our pets as most of us are and also like mothers feel like like no we are the ones who take care you know tum tum bas le aate ho ghar pe magar dekhbhal mujhe hi karni padti hai and which is 99.9% true so i think it was now during the pandemic when i got to spend so much time with him when i stayed even when i'm not here and i'm away for a week or 10 days i'll do a video call with him he hears my voice he understands so i feel like this was the time we bonded and this was the time when i was like main hu tumhari maa shifu main hu <laughs> and of course you also have to congratulate you you are also an award winning author now so Thank yes <laughs> so, so how much did your cat inspire you also when you were writing i'm sure it's a long process oh yeah we used to sit together and write so i have a working desk and he would sit on the desk while i would write mm-hmm. and sometimes when i think he had enough of me writing he would sit on the keyboard like most cats do yes. ab bas ho gaya yaar so bas to 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 pakao me yes like, hey i'm trying to do some work here so he would come and sit on the keyboard but there were so many instances like i remember this is one chapter in the book which ends with this metaphor of wearing so this was right after his surgery and he was recovering and things like that and i remember i compared you know like all the difficulties in life to be so similar to us slipping into our favorite pair of skinny jeans because it's the hardest thing to wear when it's like hot and smoldering and humid like in a city like mumbai and you're struggling and you pull and it's your favorite jeans but you struggle struggle and it's the simplest thing that you're doing but it feels the hardest and when it does the easiest thing you can do is breathe and that is like one of the greatest challenges you forget to breathe you don't know how to yeah so i had this whole analogy of wearing this jeans you know to the chapter or to the episode of him being sick and you know i lie on the bed and i kick my feet up and i struggle and you know i suffer but then there goes the button on my waist i like i sigh with relief and i look to my left and shifu is just fine i look at me i am just fine and i said that i almost thought i died playing this game of life but i only lost a life so you can always play again so that was my analogy and i got to learn a lot from him i spent so much time with him now i understand like little things like he wants to play in the middle of the night which i still refuse to do <laughs> okay i will not play with him I uh, he's an idiot I am not I have worked to do I wake up at 6 he is nocturnal so from 4:30 4 o'clock in the morning it's like mao 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 and I'm like stop screaming shifu so when he's sleeping in the day I'm like mao <laughs> mao <laughs> yeah okay that's a good way yeah, yeah, yeah we're like literally going like tit for tat at each other so it's pretty awesome we have a wholesome life you see <laughs> yeah true i'm sure he's quite an entertainer as well he is Yeah, and also because you know I love the way you kind of uh, penned your first book, and there are some difficult chapters. I'm sure it was you know you had your like recalling those moments and tough times. So was he like a big support? You know, having someone so loving with you. You know, you find like this really non-judgmental being around you. Exactly. So you so can true. just tell. and there were times some chapters were harder than others but like if something was too hard i would just put my face in his belly and just start like crying and he won't move funnily huh. you know otherwise you've seen how feisty he is 
but uh, he'll just lay. He's like, it's fine. I'm here. You can cry now. It's fine. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Yeah, I mean, that's the just the kind of you know person or animal you need in your life. Ah, <sighs> yeah. It's rare that I call him an animal, although I yeah, do. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I call him an animal like when I'm all the more doused in love and I don't know what to do with my shaman. I'm like, animal, come here. <laughs> no, I'm also the person who refer to animals as person and suddenly I'm like, okay, maybe it yeah. isn't. Yeah. No, and then I have this happy boy look and I'm like, talk to me, talk to me. I swear the day he talks to me, my roof will be gone. <laughs> no, I don't think I'm ready for that risk. When he starts talking to me, I will die <laughs> out of fear. That was actually the next question. Oh, so what if Cat would say to me? <laughs> yes, what would he say to you if he had to say something? I think honestly, his face says it all the time. I think his inner dialogue is 90% of the time. Did you fuck up again? <laughs> like that's his expression. Like his face is just like. <laughs> he's like got a grandfather expression in like the whole time like he's given up on like humanity he's given up on life he's given up on hope he's just like is kuch nahi ho sakta is aurat ka matlab khatam khatam ho gayi hai kabhi nahi sudhregi aurat hai matlab theek hi hai it's fine and i think it's it's nice to have that voice of reason <laughs> and this very like non judgmental voice of reason saying ab yaar now this is what i think now take it or leave it right So then you're like, yeah, maybe I will mend my ways. And if you had to dress him up for a party, what do you think he would dress as? Ah, uh, we have a lot of t-shirts for him as well. Like we have like a whole like tiny suitcase kind of a thing with like t-shirts and stuff like that. Yeah. So we make him wear his t-shirts. Even like uh, when it's winter, we make him wear his t-shirts. So you shouldn't trim a cat's hair. You shouldn't okay. because that is like like cats don't like change. and uh, they become very it, it takes an emotional toll on them so they feel naked in front of the world huh. and that is their protective layer so usually people are like, oh kitni garmi hogi you should like but they they sweat from their paws so they don't sweat from their bodies so you don't have to take out their fur but then because he's not used to cold weather we end up making him wear t-shirts and stuff like that during winters yeah And is there a particular grooming that you're very, you know, careful about for him? Well, now that he's growing older and the humidity, there is like a shampoo that we use uh, to like uh, clean his tail specifically, and uh, that allows you know no settlement of bacteria and fungus like on his tail. Otherwise, it gets flaky, mm. you know. And uh, but otherwise, every single morning the routine is as follows. So Shivu wakes up. I wake up, like drop refresh eye drops mm. because his eyes get dry now that he's older, okay. so he needs that 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 soluble solution in his eyes. So that's done. Then after ten minutes, I clean his eyes. Then I give him omega three. Uh, that's for his coat, okay. his shine, okay. and um, I have to run his entire body with a comb. So then he's a happy guy. Okay. Yeah, he loves the comb. Yeah, so he loves being groomed. So that's what we do. Earlier, like once every month, I used to get him a bath. Now he's so good with taking care of himself. Once in three months, once in four months, he gets a bath. Achha. That's only because he smells like food. Okay. Otherwise, he's fine. And if there's one food he could eat for the rest of his life without complaining, what do you think that would be? A nariyal pani and uh, the coconut uh, thing in Malai. The Malai. He loves the Malai. He'll come from ten freaking kilometers radius, but he'll be there. He just has to hear the ting, 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 and he's there. And then we are eating out of the same bowl or the same spoon. Or, yeah. Does that somewhere come from you? Are you also like a coconut nariyal pani person? I, I think coconut water is like a hugs for your insides. Why not? <laughs> yeah. So when I'm drinking my nariyal pani, Master Shifu is around, and then. and then we have it together the other thing about like having cats is like hair everywhere yes he speaks marathi what uh, what <laughs> what is the difference hey he understands marathi because i told you know he's rati's son so sometimes i think he's got like a little bit of a like you know one of those like dawn type of feelings in him abe chhodya kai zala chhotya he's like 
<laughs> responding to that stuff. So that's not my language to speak to him, but he like duly responds to Rati when she speaks to him in Marathi, which I find so fascinating. Like so fascinating. He's a multilingual cat, I think. <laughs> wow, that's and it was wonderful meeting you and your cat. Thank you. Shall we bring him back? One last yes. frame, why not? Bye, see you later. Thank you very much. Subscribe to Midday India. Get direct notifications on all our videos by clicking on the bell icon.